Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. O Lord, the altar of God, he is the God, God of my joy and gladness. The sentence of me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people, and deliver me from the deceitful and wicked man. For thou art God, my strength. Why hast thou put me from thee? And why do I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? O send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me, and bring me to thy holy hill into thy dwelling. And that I may go unto the altar of God, even unto God, my joy and gladness. And upon the heart will I give thanks unto thee, O God, my God. Why art thou so heavy, O my soul, and why art thou so disquiet within me? O good, I trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, which is the health of my countenance and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. Even unto God, of my joy and gladness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who have made heaven and earth. I confess, Almighty God, to Blessed Mary, ever virgin, to Blessed Michael, the Archangel, to Blessed John Baptist, to the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, all the saints and me, my brethren, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I beg, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, Blessed Michael, the Archangel, Blessed John Baptist, the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, all the angels and saints, and me, my brethren, to pray for thee, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon thee, forgive thee thy sins, and bring thee to everlasting life. Amen. I confess to Almighty God, to Blessed Mary of the Virgin, to Blessed Michael the Archangel, to Blessed John the Baptist, to the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, to all the saints, even my Father, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, and my own most grievous fault. Wherefore I beg you, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, Blessed Michael the Archangel, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, all the angels and saints, and the Father, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon thee, forgive thee thy sins, and bring thee to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. Amen. Well, then I turn again and quicken us, O God, that thy people may rejoice in thee. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rejoice, we are the Lord. Keeping holy day in honor of the blessed Virgin Mary. In whose peace the angels rejoice and glorify the Son of God. My heart is indicting of a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made unto the King. Glory be to the Father.
St. Luke. Glory to thee, o Lord. In those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah. She entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child leaped in her womb. 
And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree, filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. His help, his servant Israel, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his posterity forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This evening we celebrate what is referred to in the new calendar as the visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This particular day has not always been titled the Visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. On October 11th in 1954, Pope Pius XII, using as he stated his apostolic authority, promulgated that the feast day of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen of Heaven, The feast day of the queenship of the Blessed Virgin should be, from that point forward, celebrated on May 31st. Why not the queenship and why the visitation now? Different subject for a different day, but there has been a, let's say, a de-emphasis of authoritarian things in the church. There's been, how can we say, a lowering of the bar on who God is, what the Blessed Virgin Mary is and does for us, her office, what the saints do. There's been a, as I said, a lowering of the bar on these things. Does it make a difference? Maybe, maybe not. We're celebrating our Blessed Mother today. As often as you can do that, that's a great thing. Whether we celebrate the historical event of her visitation to her cousin St. Elizabeth, okay, if we want a history lesson, that's good. It does give us an inkling of our Blessed Mother's ministry. Hold that thought, her ministry, her desire to help, her desire to lead and guide her desire to take care of those over whom she has been given charge. Not in the world's sense, but in God's eyes. We see this with the visitation. We see it set the stage for who not the Blessed Mother was at the visitation, but what it exemplified. Pope Pius XII, when he said that he was going to promulgate this feast, he said he was doing so because of, and I quote, the documents of the ancient church, documents throughout all Christianity that emphasize the queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the prayers of the liturgy that emphasize the queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the census fidelium, the sense of the faithful, the innate understanding among the faithful throughout time that the Blessed Virgin Mary is just not a history lesson. 
just not only the mother of God, but someone to whom we can look toward as queen. Say, well, you know, where are you coming up with that? That's what we see in the visitation. That is the Holy Spirit welling up with inside St. Elizabeth, having the babe leap in her womb at the approach of the Queen of Heaven, the Blessed Virgin Mary, even at her station in life then as a teenage girl, newly pregnant. And St. Elizabeth looks at her and says, and why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Who is her Lord? God Almighty, the King of heaven and earth, the great King. And yeah, they use that term. I mean, that's from the Psalter. Who is this King of glory, speaking of God? So when St. Elizabeth says, and why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord, the mother of God, the God-bearer, Theotokos, is coming to me? Why is this granted to me? St. Elizabeth is elderly at this time, hence the miraculous birth of St. John the Baptist. She was thought to be barren because she was so old. She, in the world sense, and in Hebrew culture, is Mary's superior. And she looks at the Blessed Virgin, the pregnant teenage girl, and says, and why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? That's what I mean by the sense of the faithful. You can't get any more faithful than the Holy Spirit welling up inside you, as it says in the Gospel account. She was overcome by the Holy Spirit, and she makes that statement under the inspiration of God Almighty himself. Why is this that the mother of my Lord should come to me? That is the sense of the faithful. And then Pope Pius XII talks about something that we, I think, just take for granted, and that's works of art in our churches. The Blessed Virgin Mary is always, always depicted as someone exalted. Halos, rays of light, standing on the moon, always queenship. We don't have images of the Blessed Virgin Mary as a poor little teenage girl because the church has always looked at her as the queen of heaven. She has from all these things, as Pope Pius XII said, it is tremendously obvious that she deserves queenly dignity. And queenly dignity is to celebrate her queenship. We have a feast of Christ the King. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. How could we not have a feast of the queen his mother. It is scriptural. It is scriptural from one end to the scriptures to the other. We actually specifically see in the Psalms, in Psalm number 44, Psalm number 45 for those of you who use newer versions of the scriptures, the Psalm 44 says, and it, I'm synopsizing here because it's several verses, Psalm 44 tells us, and it's an ode to the marriage of the king. And it points forward, speaks about this king of glory whom the Lord's going to bless. We see throughout history the types and shadows of the ultimate king that's going to come in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ that is no more culminated in the world than in King David. But that's Psalm number 44 it says in part, your throne, O God, stands forever and ever. And this is the throne that's going to be inherited by the king who will reign forever and ever. And it doesn't stop with that. It goes on to say, the queen stood at your right hand in gold-trimmed robes. What? We're talking about the throne of God. Why are we talking about a queen? Because just like there are earthly queens, there is going to be the queen of the eternal Son of God, the one who's going to inherit the throne of David, on whose kingdom will have no end, as we say in the creed, every time we gather together on Sundays or feast days. 
The queen stood at your right hand in gold-trimmed robes. All the glory of the king's daughter dwells within. Why this continual reference to this female character that is at the throne of God? Because just like the type of David pointed forward to Christ, the type of queen is pointed forward to the Blessed Virgin Mary. You can't say, well, no, it's a type of Christ, but it's not a type of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That doesn't make any sense. It is unreasonable. It wouldn't be there if it didn't point forward to something. In another psalm, we read that when we're glorying in, in the presence of God to be a servant, it says that we are not only his servants. Oh, Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. Why is that in there? Because it points forward to the Blessed Virgin Mary and her relationship to the throne of God Almighty himself. You actually see the involvement of the Trinity in Psalm 44 when you look at this type, the shadow of what's to come in the Blessed Virgin Mary. Your throne, O God, your queen standing at your right hand, as I said, it's, a, it's an ode to Mary. Well, Mary wasn't married to God. No, but she was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. It's referred to liturgically as the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who overshadowed her and our Lord became incarnate. The queen stood at your right hand in gold-trimmed robes. All the glory of the king's daughter dwells within her. She is the daughter of the everlasting father. She is truly queen of heaven. She is truly queen of the universe. That's why, you know, I said before, does it make a difference if it's the queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary or the visitation? The visitation, glorious as it is, is a history lesson. She was the one who visited. She is the queen of heaven and will be, according to the psalm, for all eternity, the queen of heaven. Because if she is by definition the queen mother of heaven and her son will be king and king of lord and lords for all eternity, she by definition must be the queen of heaven for all eternity. She is our queen. She does everything for us that queens do. What do queens do with that? You know, when we talk about kings and queens in this, I, even like, you know, the, uh, when we talk about our Lord as king, when we talk about the queen mother, you know, well, we don't do kings and queens anymore. That should actually tell us something. It should speak to us because our governmental people, whether they be men or women, are fleeting. Four years, eight years, term limits, death, getting old, somebody better. No, that doesn't apply to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is truly a queen. She has the divine right of a queen, and she will reign for all eternity. And for all eternity, as she did at the visitation, as she's doing for us right now, and should the Lord tarry, as long as this planet exists, she will continue to do the things that a queen does for her people. What does a queen do for her people? She obtains forgiveness for them. She will intercede for the king. We see that type when Bathsheba goes before Solomon. Solomon is the king. He's seated on his throne, and Bathsheba comes in, and you know what Solomon does? He gets off his throne, and he comes down and does obeisance to his mother. There is no reason for him to do that. He's the king. He might respect her, but he could sit on his throne. What do you want, Mom? No, he gets off his throne, and he kneels before her. Solomon is a type of the king of kings and lord of lords. So if Solomon did that as a type, that is an action that the king of kings and lord of lords will take. He will follow his mother's suggestions because she was immaculately conceived and she is the pinnacle of faith and obedience. There is no question that he will answer her. So queens obtain forgiveness, they intercede for their people. 
with the king. The queens do their best to overcome strife. We see that time and time again in human history, particularly among the lives of the saints. Some of the queens who became saints are saints because they were peacemakers. Sometimes their own family members would be fighting. Civil wars, brothers fighting brothers over the kingdom, over the throne, over a little piece of land somewhere, and the queen would be a peacemaker. Our lady still does that. It's kind of hard to be in conflict with somebody when you're standing in front of an image or sitting in front of an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary, or if you start the consultations with a rosary. It softens things up. Our Blessed Mother overcomes strife. She'd overcome strife in your interior struggles and your exterior struggles. Rely on her. Look at an image of her. Think of her as your mother and your queen, embracing you and loving you. It makes things easier. Queens distribute grace. They distribute, they distribute to those who need it. Again, a lot of saint queens, to the chagrin of their husbands, the king occasionally, would take stuff out of the palace and give it and sell it for the poor. That's what our Blessed Mother does. She distributes graces to us through her son. She doesn't have to give up anything. He is the font of all graces, and she will distribute them accordingly. Queens also lead their people to glory. Some queens, we just had the feast day of Joan of Arc this past week, she, in a very real sense, led her people to glory, and she was not even a queen. A lot of queens have gone to battle, been with the soldiers as they went to the front, as a motivator. That's our Blessed Mother for us. She leads us to glory. She is our queen. She did visit St. Elizabeth, but she is our queen. That's why I just, as my personal opinion, think that something has fallen short in this taking the focus off of our Queen Mother and putting it on some historical event, as glorious as that historical event is. I'm not being pejorative toward it at all. It sets the stage for her queenship. It lets us know through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit about her queenship, because we all should ask that same question. Every time we look at it, an image of the Blessed Virgin, every time we ask her intercession, we should come away from that, be, either before, after, maybe both, and ask ourselves, why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should listen to me? That is not hypermarian devotion. That is the Holy Spirit speaking to us through Scripture, and that's the way we should approach the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's why she is so deserving of the title, Queen of the Universe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God and his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, be God and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost as a virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitting on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to God. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world.
Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, Francis our Pope, Stephen our Bishop, His Holiness Benedict XVI, John the Bishop of Orlando, and to all bishops and other sacred ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works. The rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants of heart of this life of thy faith and fear. We seek that you to be immersed with grant fullness of joy in thy love and service, and to grant us grace that to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our mediator and advocate, who with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory. Amen. Draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. <coughs> Almighty God, Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. Provoke me most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, of his great mercy, have promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heart and repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ hath all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Hear also what St. John said, If any man said, We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a propitiation for our sins.
say with specific attention for the repose of the soul of Gregorio. Rest eternal grant upon him, O Lord, and let life perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful depart into the mercies of God. Rest in peace. Amen. Pray, brethren, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable in the God and Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of us and the grace of the Lord is in him for our good and good of all this holy church. We beseech thee, O Lord, that the manhood of thine only begotten Son may in such wise avail for our succor that even as he, being born of a virgin, destroyed not but hallowed the innocence of his mother, so on this feast of her visitation to Elizabeth, he may deliver us from all our offenses, and render us an oblation acceptable unto thee, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be he with you. And with my spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very neat, right in our bounden duty. That we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. And that in the visitation of Blessed Mary, Ever Virgin, we should praise thee, bless thee, and extol thee. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Ghost, she conceived thine only begotten, and in the abiding glory of her virginity, shed forth upon this world the light everlasting, who is Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Thy servants, 
and from thy whole family. Order thou our days and thy peace, and bid us to be delivered from eternal damnation, be numbered the full of thine elect. Thou safe, O God, we beseech thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, approved and accepted, a perfect and worthy offer, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who, the day before he suffered, took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee, God is Almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed broke and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you Likewise, after supper, taking also this goodly chalice into his holy and venerable hands. Again, giving thanks to thee, he blessed and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for and for men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim by the Lord, the Lord Christ, our resurrection, until thou come again. Wherefore, O Lord, we thy servants and thy holy people also, remembering the blessed passion of the same Christ, thy Son, our Lord, as also his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven, to offer unto thine excellent majesty of thine own gifts and bounty, the pure victim, the holy victim, the Immaculate Victim, the Holy Bread of Eternal Life, Chalice of Everlasting Salvation. Thou safe to look upon them with a merciful and pleasant countenance, and to accept them, even as thou didst thou safe to accept the gifts of thy servant Abel the Righteous, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the Holy Sacrifice, the Immaculate Victim, which thy High Priest Melchizedek offered unto thee. We humbly beseech the Almighty God, command these offerings to be brought by the hand of thy holy angel to thine altar on high, in sight of thy divine majesty, that all we who have this partaking of the altar shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, may be fulfilled with all heavenly benediction and grace. Remember also the Lord thy servants and handmaids who have gone before us, sealed with the seal of faith, who sleep the sleep of peace. Through them, O Lord, to all that rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant the abode of refreshing of light and of peace. To us sinners also, thy servants who hope in the multitude of thy mercy. Thou safe to grant and part and fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, with John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, 
and with all thy saints within whose fellowship we beseech thee amid us, now weighing our merit and granting us forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom, O Lord, thou dost ever create all these good things, thou sanctify, quicken, bless, and bestow them upon. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, to the O Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory throughout all ages, world without end. Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. So are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Almighty and ever living God, we will heartily thank thee for the God of Jesus and these holy mysteries. With the Spirit of food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son and our Savior Jesus Christ, and us assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to with thee and the Holy Ghost, which we all honor and glory, the world of thy Amen. Let us pray. Grant we beseech thee, O Lord, that the sacrament which we have received in thy mysteries on this yearly festival may both in this life and that in which is to come be profitable unto us for the healing of our souls through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The peace of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of this on Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass is ended, depart in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel according to St. John the Divine. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And it was light, and the light was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent for God, whose name was John. The same came for witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through Him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word is made flesh and dwells among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 